Welcome to repairing a Stuart Twin Victoria model steam engine. This is part 8, the final part, and it's working on the other side of the engine and tweaking the valve timing slightly. And this is a bit of a deja vu. As I turn the engine round, it looks remarkably similar to the side that I've just done, except things are at the opposite end. So what I'm going to do is not be pedantic and go into great detail. I'm going to run most of the disassembly process in high speed like this. That way I can talk about other things. And for any viewers out there who are disappointed and would really like to see me doing it all again, I suggest that you get yourself a mirror and rerun some of the earlier videos. This video series has been much quicker than the previous one. Rebuilding that steamboat really took a lot of doing. 31 episodes I believe it was. And I lost the will to live on several occasions, that was incredibly difficult. Just a quick thought, I didn't wake up one morning and find that I could rebuild steam engines. I used to read a lot, and I used to read the works of LBSC and model engineer for many years. LBSC wrote about steam engine building, mainly small steam locomotives. But he wrote about it in a non-technical manner. He was a very interesting chap, his real name was Lillian Lawrence. You can still buy bound volumes of model engineer from this period, the 40s and 50s I believe. They come up from time to time on eBay and they're well worth looking at, you'll get a lot of information from there. Right, that's the engine dismantled, and I'm now in real time. This is a cylinder that I've just removed, and there's something very wrong with this cylinder. As I push the piston in and out with the original ring in place, well, apart from the gasket coming off, I should have taken that off first, but as I push the piston in and out, the cylinder feels really wrong. It feels ribbed, and I mean really badly ribbed. A little bit like the type of condom that is ribbed. In fact, if I wanted to, with a bit of latex, I could manufacture my own ribbed condoms with this cylinder. So what I'm doing at the moment is removing the other cylinder cover. I need to have a close look at this, because if it looks as bad as it feels, then I have a problem. Now, with the cylinder cover removed, you can clearly see the ribbed effect of the cylinder. This is the worst I've ever seen. It's really grim. What I think I'll do is turn a light on it, that's better, now you can see it. I'm really puzzled by this, the engine is generally very well machined, but the machinist must have had a day off when he did this. So now what? I do have a cylinder horn set, but it's not particularly good quality and these are very deep grooves. So instead, I'm going to use one of these. I bought these a few years ago, and I don't use them very often, but now and again they come in useful. A full set of expanding reamers, and they're all imperial, so this one is the one that's just under an inch up to an inch. And to use one of these, you introduce it to the bore of the cylinder, or the hole that you want to ream, and by adjusting the position of the two collars on the reamer, the relative position of the cutting blades can be moved in or out. In this case I need to move them out slightly, to take a series of very fine cuts down the cylinder. All I did was put the reamer in the lathe, turned the chuck by hand, and fed the cylinder onto the reamer. There is also a hole in the end of the reamer to take a centre to keep everything straight. It actually took four passes with the reamer, readjusting slightly after each cut, to completely remove the rib defect in the cylinder. And by fitting the silicone piston ring to the piston, the cylinder now has a really smooth finish and the piston slides in and out very easily. A very quick result to what could have been a disaster. So I also machined off a bit of the rear cylinder cover, in the same way as I did with the first one, and then after thoroughly oiling every part of the cylinder and piston and piston ring, I reassemble it. And once again I've already covered assembling the cylinders on the first half of this engine. And of course the cylinders are identical in every way, except that they're assembled back to front, so the exhaust pipes point in opposite directions. If you watched episode 7, you will see that I used a piece of brass bar to lever the cylinder forward, and here it is from the other side. I also set the position of the eccentric to be 90 degrees to the crank, just like the other side really. Except of course that the eccentric was set to 90 degrees on the opposite side of the crank to the other one. If you get it wrong don't worry, the engine won't turn over but no damage will be done. I covered this in the last episode so I'm not going to lay it on too thick, but once again, on this cylinder I'm also adjusting the position of the valve relative to the rotation of the crankshaft. 
And don't forget that the valve needs to uncover the ports an equal amount at both sides. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Sorry about that, that was just my attempt at a small joke. So I connect some compressed air and the engine runs. I ran it for a while because there were one or two tight spots and then all I had to do was minutely adjust the timing just by moving one of the eccentrics a slight amount in the opposite direction and the engine suddenly runs very smoothly, very sweetly and sounds quite even. The main thing of course is that the engine is now mechanically correct. No ribbed cylinder, no floppy valve gear and it runs as it's supposed to do. Thanks for watching this series and I really hope you found it useful. I'll leave the engine running for a short while so that you can appreciate the poetry in motion that is a steam engine, even though it's running on compressed air.